Hello, and welcome to the Old Farm Bus Podcast. This is the Back of the Bus Session. Hello, and welcome to the Old Farm Bus, Back of the Bus Sessions. I've not done that before, that was my first time. Maybe not, well, I just need to flip the lights on. Today, I've got a gorgeous, lovely guest with me. She's been on here before. And it was an absolutely sensational performance, I must say. I'm warming you up and find out who this is. She works for the NHS. She makes phenomenal music. She's a filmmaker. What else here? You want to travel? That's all I've got down now. That's it. We're out of combo. <laughs> Today, I've got Molly Ralph with me. <laughs> Molly, in post-edit, I've now found this perfect crowd noise where I can get people to clap. So you'll hear that. Nice one, nice one. Molly, how the hell are you feeling? I'm all right. How are, you are you all good? Yeah, yeah. It's I'm a good. pleasure to see you here. So when when was it you performed on the busking session? It must have been about. Feels like a lifetime ago, to be honest. Six or seven months. Yeah. How did you Before find it? Time. What was that like for you? Oh, it was lovely. Such an I've never played such an intimate gig before. It was lovely. It worked because, like, first of all, like when you're first sitting down and everyone's just like so close yeah. and it's just like a pin drop. That's you're like. It. Hello. <laughs> what do I say now? <laughs> but you, it was like so natural with you, like that to be able to perform to. I'm presuming you've been in front of thousands before, and to be in like twelve or like I think there was about twenty people. Mm. But I how... was I was more nervous doing that really as opposed to the big crowds I've played. You know, I played I supported the Gypsy Kings. You know, at the Royal Concert Hall. Whoa, and, girl! And <laughs> that here was more nerve wracking. I do honestly think like you're going to be one of them names where people just go. Oh shit! It's Molly and like Ray. You so, you've got sound. You've got this specific sound. And every time I put you on, I'm like, oh, it's power. It really oh, is. Thank you. How are you at taking compliments? You like it, or you like, oh, not <laughs> me. <laughs> I just, I always, I don't know. I, I just don't know how to say thank you. It's thank you. Um, thank you. I appreciate uh, it. I love it. So thank you for being a part of that. How many are in your band? So, there is ten of us. Yeah, it's quite big. Ten. It's growing, yeah. Growing? It's growing. I don't know how big it's going to get. I might so, get a string section soon. <laughs> d- did you piece them all together, or how did that come about? Um, well, it, <laughs> this is a joke amongst my band, because I sack people sometimes. No I way. Do. I've had to in the past. Um, what makes you sack someone? I'm a meanie. No, it's just, obviously... <laughs> meanie, I, baby. Meanie. <laughs> <laughs> I do this because I want to make you know the best possible music and you know make make it as good as the track yeah as live so mm-hmm. obviously i'm gonna want the best people playing with me um and we just so i got josh on board who's my bassist mm. and he's such knew a cam. lovely guy as well he's so amazing um and he knows cam who's a sax player mm. they're both vet students so it's just i don't know it's just how it's just how people know and they're just linking and it just kept linking like that mm. and it's going on past 10 now yeah, it's going, it's wow cool. so what's it look like when you're on a stage with 10 people are you like sort of the very front and they're all just yeah, like chilling. doing at the back <laughs> like, it's, it's, it's unfathomable so to me it's so fun and because i obviously started off acoustic and was on my own mm. and, you know, you just can't beat it being on the stage. You know, everyone there, you love them all, and it's just like, this is so much fun. Mm. It's You can't beat it. I know, don't get me wrong, I love the intimate acoustic gigs, but, you know, just letting me be able to focus on my vocal and just dancing with them. Like, Josh, I love dancing with him on the stage, oh, and it's mate. just it's so much fun. What, like, is that dynamic with everyone? Like, do you know them all really close, or are they sessions, or what? Um... I, I know I know them through music. Yeah. I mean, we've got to know each other really well. Um, mm-hmm. But they're all just so eager to... Because they love music. Mm. So that's what's nice. I mean, I hope we can get on a tour one day and we'll... I think they yeah, come in, man. Cool. Yeah, that cool. And I'd love to have them all come with me. Wow. Yeah. This is power. Again, like, something I always say to my friends, um, I got into music really late and it was just because I lost a friend through a knife crime incident. Mm. I was travelling at the time and I got a phone call from my dad telling me about all the bad stuff happening mm. and I just found writing as a cathartic tool like a really beautiful thing to fall to 
And again, before that, I was just hanging around with the lads, lads from Ripley lads, football lads. <laughs> and then suddenly, like, I come home, I start up a Rhythmical Mike YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. And everyone's like, seeing Bloody Mike, you're doing poetry now. <laughs> like, getting on that wave. Oh, I love but that, yeah. I, uh, yeah, got into the music scene and met so many incredible, gifted people. Mm. But I do now have that little bit of envy where I'm like, oh, like jamming with a band. Because I'm not, I'm Rhythmical Mike, but ironically, I've not got much rhythm <laughs> like i couldn't actually hold a beat or get on a stage and jam with the music mm -hmm. it's all been a cappella stage performance yeah i know but that just comes with practice to be fair really you no know, i i wasn't do you think rhythm's I, in the soul or can you I practice think, it i think you can practice it yeah. i mean i wasn't the most most rhythmical person okay but you know you just it's just the skill you get i mean obviously there are people that are just you know born with in. it they just got it you know it's in their soul but yeah i definitely think it can be adapted oh, i might yeah. later on in Wait, life then i think when we release that single yeah baby the band, <laughs> that's then quite power it, yeah. yeah i'll be coming and jamming with you but it it's just there's something other with music mm -hmm. like whatever i've been a part of sports team in my boxing life when i can you tell <laughs> anything i've been a part of i've loved it to its core mm -hmm. but then when you're in music like there's something being created there for that's universal and unspoken yeah. but it's everyone's in on it such a whole other world so when i see like a band smashing it mm -hmm. and like they're actually like in the moment gone yeah. you I, I get my envy there because i'm like i'd love to create that for people yeah that's so yeah, powerful yeah, yeah. do you fit what does it feel like in that moment could you explain it <laughs> it is powerful i mm. mean you know just being able to look up and see people vibing off of what yeah. you're creating it's amazing it's it's, it's just beautiful like, I always like as a crowd in the crowd as a member just watching mm -hmm. i love just looking around like like, everyone's in that's it like you see like little people hugging they're like this band and yeah, it's like music oh. is power <laughs> yeah i never realized that truly until i got with the band and I, mm. it's just it's, what you can create is just amazing and it's a bug it's like you don't want to stop doing it and mm. you feel that like too surely it's just I, I mean i've had a different view and walk with it so mine was sort of coming out like um sound like coming out of the closet then like i came out baby i was a writer <laughs> but i i started performing mm -hmm. and again it felt incredible and yeah. within like a few months maybe six months from doing it i got on stage with like russell brand rizzle oh. kicks mike skinner uh, and i met these people that were always my heroes mm -hmm. and it's not name dropping but it was just me literally being like in awe this is yeah. taking me to these places and i loved it with such passion but as it went on i kept performing like my same lyrics lyrics and being on similar stages and like what yeah. we we're talking about before when you get to a position where people aren't really listening to you do you know where you're having yeah. a debate and they're just waiting to say their point yeah when they went to poetry nights and stages you could tell when it's all poets in the crowd mm -hmm. they were just like when is it my go when's That's it my it, go yeah. and that got a little bit off put for me mm. so i'd even got an another one that killed me was when you go to a gig and everyone's just talking over oh god yeah the artist it's like the, the, that's literally the reason I got the buses mm -hmm. was because I wanted to create that NPR Respectful session, place, like yeah. uh, so far sound mm -hmm. session, like vibe where it's all about the artist. That's it, yeah. Outside we can go and talk about anything we want, but oh, the amount of times we've nearly had 50, fifty cuffs with somebody because <laughs> talking over talking is just noise. It's like yeah, that's <laughs> it, and I think that's an issue I've faced at open mic nights recently in Nottingham, right? I mean, before lockdown, yeah, but. You know, it is, it is just everyone wants to play and they're focused on that. And that's fair enough. That's why mm. you go. But it's also a respectful place. And I think that's an issue. There's so many open mics in Nottingham. It's so highly saturated. Yeah. But, yeah. I mean, when I first started out, it was Phil Fizz and it was, oh, it was amazing. I loved it. But I've, I've not really, apart from, rock, you know, um, Jam Cafe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's amazing in it's there. It's a power vibe. Yeah. I love it. There. But that, that's the only real open mic in Knots mm. left that I really appreciate and... Yeah, that's up on that level, I think. 
So you feel like the music scene is getting a little saturated in areas? As it, Just in terms of open mic, really. I yeah. mean, I'd, I do really love Nottingham, I think, when you compare it with oh, other... Man. It's, it's, such, it's such a support. Everyone's network. togetherness, That's it. like, it's amazing. attitude towards it. It's, it's really amazing. You, you meet so many people, like, heck, we came here and then you just meet so many musicians. And, yeah. You know, that's led on to other things. It's, it's incredible. You know, I don't think there's another hmm. city in the UK like it. No. I mean, everyone, what I talk a lot about at the minute, everyone's like trying to make it. Mm hmm. And sometimes we forget that we're making it because yeah, we're creating it. And like it. the passion's the passion. Mm -hmm. And we forget why we picked up the pen in the first Definitely. place. It's just because it was an enjoyable sound. Mm -hmm. It was an enjoyable process. And they're looking at the end goal. Yep. So when I've been to them gigs that you talk about or like where it felt a bit saturated mm -hmm. is because it is that itchiness to just get up and show everybody That's how it. good you are. And it's like, remember that process though. Remember why you got into music and the beauty That's and it. some areas in Nottingham really kept that I, I used to go to the maze all the time and it just oh. felt inclusive and like everyone together again but mm -hmm. uh, London was a big one for me everyone was trying to get to London mm -hmm. and I was so excited to get my first London gig mm -hmm. but I didn't realize how sort of cutthroat it could be as well like yeah. I think it was on a stage I think like one of the Rizzle kicks was there and loads of people but I tried to perform this like really like long like story poem I was proud of mm -hmm. it was probably like eight minutes of like deep story yeah. and I did, you had like two and a half minutes so after like two and a bit minutes they're like <laughs> all that and I was like man oh, yeah so my. but yeah. again that's that's probably me misreading the yeah. the, mm. the crowd misreading the situation but I've had music friends and performers that have gone yeah London was a bit cutthroat for me as well yeah I haven't actually performed in London wow yet, hopefully oh you will hopefully I will you will uh, be soon but, won't you <laughs> 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 like, oh, yeah <laughs> announced <laughs> here yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um but I think it's what's mm. important is seeing these other musicians not as your competitor. Yeah. That's what, you know, you could both make it, whatever. It's mm. just actually appreciating each other and supporting each other because you not supporting them isn't going to mm. progress your career any further. Mm. You know, and I think there is a, a bit of this, like, throw them under the bus attitude sometimes, which I get it because... We all want we all want to get there, and you know it's our passion. We'd love mm. to do it as a career or whatever, but it's just you just gotta be logical about it, and you know. Do you have like flows of different like re like waves of really wanting it, and then mm. coming back round yeah. and being like, oh no, I'm gonna relax, and then really wanting it? Yeah, Does I'm, it go I'm, like that? I'm just as guilty of it, you know. I, yeah, I get like we were saying earlier, I get envious. Yeah, you know, yeah. I see something someone's creating, I'm digging oh my god hmm. i want to do that and for me it just inspires me further yeah and you know i'll still i'll still support them because what they're doing is amazing and it's progressing me hmm. further and i think yeah that's forgotten about a lot it's a good attitude to, and envy is a great part of life like you mm, say it is. makes you want to excel makes you want to do better for yourself Definitely. and if you channel it right mm. it becomes a beautiful tool but if you turn it to jealousy and repress it, it mm. starts to become, like, really toxic. Well, yeah, and then it, you're just going to be bitter. It and... comes out in people. I yeah. see them, like, like nagging each other on that. I look, I really am a silent observer. I look back, I'm like, are you not mad? Yeah, <laughs> that's it. And it's, it's unnecessary, really, because it's only going to hurt you. Mm. Mm. Especially from what we were talking about earlier, about how different music is. Mm -hmm. Like, how like universal it can be and other it's so subjective and that's to, the thing. to be in such a beautiful art form and to be a part of something extra mm. to get into them competitive fields it just doesn't it seems redundant yeah exactly it's unnecessary it sense, yeah so what like when did you realize you were sick <laughs> <laughs> when did you get to the point where you're like oh shit I, i'm not too bad <laughs> um <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I don't. I don't. Mm, I don't know. How do you word this about? I mean, I think I did throw a bit of a question at you there, <laughs> but you, you know what I meant by. Like. Um, like, <laughs> I just. What for me? It was just God. I am enjoying this. Mm. Like, and people are enjoying it. Yeah. And I mean, I guess it was after because when I sold out my EP launch at mm -hmm. Rough Trade for my first EP. Wow. That was cool because that was the first real band gig. And, yeah. you know, everything, when you're acoustic, you can't express how you want your music to sound at live gigs. So actually having that 
these people there to support you and to actually bring your sound to mm. life. Mm. That was incredible. That was incredible. And you know, I was sat there like, damn. This, this is happening. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then particularly when, you know, I was sending out my um EP out to, you know, um, managers and things just trying to get spark up a bit of interest. And my current managers messaged me like, "Oh my god, I love your sound." And I was like, "Yes." Really? Yes. Yeah, someone was interested and yeah, I'm with them now, Glyn, over at in London. So oh yeah, wow, cool. this is so exciting. Yeah. Honestly, you are somebody I'm really inspired by you. Like whatever level you're at as an artist, to look up and just see like the people doing really well and just go, oh like having that good side to you, just going, oh wicked and it inspires. It makes yeah. you wanna achieve the best you can achieve. Not to say Definitely. like, oh I wanna be Molly level or whatever level it's just you, you do you. Do the, do the best you can you do. Can and yeah, that's it. Aspire to do higher and <laughs> aspire yeah. to get to the best version of you. Definitely. And that's what seeing you see it seeing some other artists that I'm watching at the minute on No Nearer Concrete Rose, oh, just doing them. Incredible. I'm like, oh mate, like it's just beautiful to see people running forward with their passion yeah. with such like enjoyment i definitely. can feel it in them definitely i think my thing at the minute one of my aim, main aims is you know trying to be self-sufficient so i've spoken to you a lot about you know doing the videography trying to yeah we have my own videos and things like that and oh, that was always the thing i thought oh god i'm never going to be able to do that and then then seeing some of the content of the other musicians you know that made me think wait maybe I could do this, you know, like seeing your stuff, and I'm thinking, hmm, let's let's buy a camera, yeah. bully my dad into recording me, and let's see what I can edit yes. and create. And yeah, then we got the traitor and fellow music videos. Wow, so and it so is so good, man. To say you your dad filmed it and you edited it yeah. is such a great story. Like for you, like when you're like five years down the line and wherever you are, mm -hmm. to be able to people to see your first like video homemade, mm -hmm. but how good the quality is. It's gonna be, you won't look back at it and go, oh bloody yeah, like cringeworthy because <laughs> I've got some of them videos. <laughs> no, you can't. It's so like I said to you, like every shot was like energetic and mm. entertaining and like mm. you don't want any dead shots in there Definitely you want it yeah. moving and like you're such a performer as well let's go into like young little mo i'm gonna picture it now <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> but were, were you no, i was such a i was such on reach for the wine now i was yeah. such a timid <laughs> yeah young mo, here we go <laughs> <laughs> i'm not timid anymore <laughs> no but yeah throughout school you know i had a i had a real confidence loss and really? I stopped, yeah i stopped doing music and i think it's sometimes typical with teenage girls really mm. with puberty and everything but yeah so i stopped doing it and i did you know some grading and loved it while i was younger got to secondary school fizzled out mm. and then it was when I started uni that I thought, you know what, I I'd just gone to New York on holiday, you know, and you're feeling really inspired. And you're yeah. Like, God, I want to come here and, you know, do music. And Were you going to everything. music nights over there? No, no, no. Well, I had planned to when I went in March this year. Mm -hmm. But then, um, literally, they were imposing lockdown as we were wow. there. Wow. And we it got really got hit out. hard in um, New York, didn't yeah, it? Yeah. Like so on the last night, I got really ill, had a fever. And I was thinking, oh, no, I've got it. They're not going to let me on the plane. <sighs> Yeah, but luckily, no, <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> wow. Um, but, like, let's go to literally, like, three, four-year-old mole. Mm. How oh. was, what was that? Like, were you still singing, dancing? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I was all right. Yeah, I made up my own language. It was brilliant. Did you? <laughs> yeah. What was the language? Can you remember it? Just shit. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you have, like, um, a sibling? I do. Yeah, so me and my sister. Made it up together. my parents are are musicians and well my mum played the piano and my dad was actually in a band when he was younger okay in the 80s. quite like a standard but like um, a good standard <laughs> well they had a number one hit in salt lake city whoa so, girl i don't know what that means i'm thinking power yeah. yeah they lived in london they they almost got signed um wow so yeah you know i've been, always been like encouraged in music so when we were younger they had their little music room and then they'd be like come on molly and jess like let's let's record a song and oh this is yeah, amazing like, I, it what was, a story i was inspired from a young age for music and then when i was you know 
12 to 13, me and my sister tried to do like a little duo act and played a couple of gigs. Were you using your made up language in this? <laughs> no. <laughs> Clap, no. <laughs> we were trying to go for, you know, the, like the Everly Brothers kind of. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. That was fun. That was fun, but it wasn't really her <laughs> or thing. Or Simon and Garfunkel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh dear. But no, yeah. So my childhood really pushed me with music and mm. you know I would have he regretted it heavily if I'd never just because I was always too nervous to go to these open mics and then when yes. I went to one I was like oh my god I can't believe I've this is been, what yeah, I've been missing out on that's it why mm. didn't I just do it sooner was, was it a really was it a nice childhood did you have like a really oh, like loving amazing enjoyable yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love my parents. You know, I say my mum's my best mate. Really? <laughs> you know, yeah, it's just, they're so, you know, they're so aspirational and they, they're so proud of me. And yeah, I had a great childhood. Do, do you see their music? Have they got any stuff on YouTube or anywhere I could listen to it later on? I what? think my mum made my dad take it all down. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> did, did they meet each other through music as well? No, no. It's, my mum met my dad when she was 16 and they've been together ever since. Ever since? Yeah. Wow, okay. Yeah. Had, have, have you, like, spoke to them about that? Yeah. Like, what's their, like, are they happy like mm. that? Or did they, like, wish they'd have gone on different journeys first? Or No, my, they're so content because they, mm. they, they wanted to do their journeys together. Yeah. I think oh, that's what's so mate. beautiful. This is like and a poem or a great, <laughs> like, Hollywood blockbuster. Yeah. I mean, I think that's what's been ingrained into me a lot. I mean, mm. I've, I've gone, gone through, a, like, a breakup myself. <gasps> <really. gasps> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Molly's, like, uh, DMs are just getting slid into <laughs> left, right and centre now. <laughs> what happened what happened <laughs> doo, doo. Well, let's not get into that yeah. but um but so obviously it's, i've wanted to you know relive what my parents have have done like mm. they've grown together but you know it's not always everyone's path um it's amazing you know seeing what they've they've done and together and but yeah it's not it's not for everyone so you you were in a long-term relationship then I think that's yeah. it. like three years for five five years Blimey. Yeah. And you're 23. I'm so. 23. Yeah. yeah, the maths there. I was eight, 17. But eight. no, you said 18. <laughs> yeah. so, it's a long time, yeah. you know. And it's sometimes you, you, you're not the same person you were when you got with them. And mm. that's a sad reality. But as long as, you know, it can be amicable. And what I love with this podcast, like, again, I, I've talked about all my substance abuse stories, like... Yeah. Um, addiction stories with mm -hmm. sex and lots of things mm -hmm. like I just love truths and I felt like a big side of myself I had to hide because especially my job like going into different schools and yeah, platforms yeah. but also I thought no if I think of like be the person you needed when you were younger or like little mini Mikey running around That's it. I, I had a really harrowing not very nice childhood mm -hmm. lots of bullying really struggled mm -hmm. severe mental health like really like to the point of like suicide and I think of little mini Mikey now and I'm like if he was listening to a podcast I want him to hear all the ins and outs yeah. and truths and lefts and rights so because that's what life's full of of course it is yeah so, so like with your like relationship split we don't we don't need to dive into it but like have you been presented with a lot of truths is there a lot yeah. of like yeah good stuff come out of this definitely um <clears throat> <coughs> yeah definitely um it's definitely opened my eyes up and, you know, just not being naive and, you know, accepting that people change and, mm. you know, there's, there's so many, there's so many lessons to learn in life mm. and, you know, you've just got to find them out and did explore them. Did you plateau a bit in life? Like, did you get to a stage where you're like, this is just, you know, I'm, I've got to a really good stage with music. I've got to a really good stage in life, but I'm also plateaued a little bit. Yeah, Did yeah, you become definitely. that? And, you know, then the mental health strikes and you, you just... You do get in a bit of a rut, particularly in lockdown. I've, mm. I mean, I've been lucky because I have been able to work, you know, I'm a nurse, yeah. but... Yeah, I've, I've really, I have struggled, um, I'm not going to lie, and maybe that was a, like, a big factor in my breakup, but it did bring a lot of home truths, and, mm. you know, I, I'm glad, in a sense, that lockdown happened, because, you know, I, d I, I don't want to go too much into this. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, because you'll watch it, and then I'll Oh, no, 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 that's fine, that's yeah. fine. I, just, uh, I, I really appreciated recently when you spoke and you mm. said like you know I've really struggled in life with my mental health mm. Mm. and 
for for me looking at you and like seeing your platform like really like idolizing what your music's about and what mm-hmm. you're about when you were so open and honest about mental health i was just like oh wow respect to that because yeah. you always like through social media you look at people in a certain light and yeah, it's a very like so. that's all you see yeah so, so you and say, everyone wants the best you know, to, to be portrayed Bursion. in the best light. Yeah, like, you're creating it. a little, like, mini yeah, you. but it's not real. And that's the thing mm. that a lot of people, you know, particularly with females with social media, it can be so mm. toxic. And That's kind I've of what fallen, I was talking to you about yeah, before. With the... I've fallen victim to this, you know. Huh. That girl sat there, oh, my God, she sat there and she hasn't got any rolls on her tummy and huh. she looks amazing. And, huh. and, and I think, oh, my God, why don't I look like that? And it's just like, yeah, but it's not real mm. a lot of the time. And you haven't got to compare yourself to these people. You, so, you, you do so you. so important what that's you're saying. It. And that's like, at the minute, like, I couldn't have imagined you with mental health. And mm. that's like a bit of naivety on my part because you're a human. But again, like just seeing this certain view. That's it. You only get a snapshot of someone's life on y- social media. Yeah, yeah. So like when it come out, I like brilliant. I love that side of you, the openness side. Mm. But what you're talking about there with like uh, females in particular, and mm-hmm. I, it's an alien side to me, obviously, being a male and looking mm. at the but, social yeah. side. Yeah, there's still pressure and i still i can be a part of the discussion yeah because I'm, I'm having a baby girl soon <laughs> Woo, <we're> going, girl. <laughs> and when uh ella eventually comes to be ella but like i really want to help educate her mm. in the right way i want to like lead her down the right paths and with what the world's like at the minute and social media platforms it's really hard for me to look at some things where i'm like but how's that going to fuel my daughter and how's she going to actually like deal with this Mm -hmm. and be a part of this so i need to learn that side of things right like talking to powerful women like you and a few others that i've had on it really helps me have a standpoint and help her (laughs) yeah no that's amazing and yeah. How do you break away from that, like, comparing yourself then? How do you... I'm still learning. Are you, okay. Yeah, I'm going to admit, I'm, I'm still learning. But I don't know. I think a lot of us spend far too much time on their phones and, mm. you know, analysing constantly. Oh, look what they're doing. Oh, mm. I'm not doing that. Oh. And it's just like... it's. With we we live our lives revolve around social media. Yeah. And I think yeah. it's just... You know, I get home from work some nights and I'm sat there and I'm just like... I've just spent an hour scrolling mm. when I could have been doing something yeah. so productive. Yeah. So I literally have just started turning it off, you right. know, putting it away. Well, that's a great first answer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's a good start. You know, and <laughs> just turn it on in the evening when I've done something. And, you know, then I don't feel like I need to feel bad when looking at what other people are doing. So, so have you felt like just scrolling sort of exacerbates your mental oh, health? absolutely, and... yeah. Because I, I just, I've just got on them personalities where i just want to be as good as i can and when i see someone's doing amazing i'm like oh that could be me me. yeah part of this like cycle and like even when you get to that level it's like you look for the next thing and the next thing i just slip me back on hey (laughs) 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 do like i suppose the first thing is being conscious of it and aware of it Mm. if you're aware of your scrolling or aware of you like oh she's gorgeous i should be like her that's what i want to be Mm -hmm. having that like side of looking at yourself because i love this guy's uh, eckhart toll it's like do you have a spiritual side at all is there some of that in there somewhere i don't know it might be ready to burst out yeah (laughs) loom baby (laughs) there's a is a guy when i was really struggling um i I said in a video the other day like psychosis Mm -hmm. and it was like down a bit um i put him on one time and i was like I can vibe with that. (laughs) And he talks a lot about the moment. But one of the powerful quotes he said, he was like, you're not your thoughts. You're the thing that sees your thoughts. And I was just like, oh, so the observer, like there's something like seeing that. But when you're aware of your scrolling or comparing or analyzing, I think that's a good start. I think that's the way of like attaching, detaching from that. Does that make sense? Because thoughts are, infinite thoughts are always just going to come and if you go attach yourself to everyone you build a little like reality up that isn't even reality Mm -hmm. you're just building it so i think that's what i see a lot of at the minute is comparison and 
building realities that aren't. Mm. That makes sense. Yeah, or yeah. have I just no, gone no, so no, no, far no. down a no, hole? <laughs> Mikey I'm with like, his little Whoa. parachute on. <laughs> Let's I'm go, like... Mal. <laughs> Jump on the back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, no, no, you're right. Um, that paired with bloody conflict on mm. social media, it's just... Well, what? because you're quite political as well with your... Yeah, like, I try though. not to be on my mm. social media... Um, is that because it is like just a promotional platform for you, really? Like, is that what you want it's it to just be? Just because I suppose so, but it's also just because I don't want to ram my opinions down people's throats. Mm. You know, I it's, it's having true. that balance, I think, because everyone's going to have their opinion and it's, you know, it's good to have these discussions but not ram them down throats because mm. it's not going to achieve anything, it's just going to achieve conflict. It really doesn't. That's the one thing I've seen the most at the minute. On yeah. even micro levels with family members, yeah. friendship circles, they're, they're, they're all on the same team. They're all compassionate, loving, caring, amazing people. Mm-hmm. And my, my dad is the loveliest guy you'll ever meet. Mm-hmm. I'm mini him, but he's even more chill, more laid back, just nice. And yeah. my sister's like a powerhouse, like a uh, so she's a lawyer a social yeah. rights activist lawyer like brings people in the country gets them um what's the word mm, oh citizenship yep. and things like okay. that she's amazing and them two are like the kindest hearts mm-hmm. but the other night we were around the table and they're all chatting mm-hmm. and we had the best night ever and then black lives matter comes okay. up and they're, bo- they're both on the same team i'm look yeah. i'm looking at a micro level what's happening on a macro level mm-hmm. Two people that love each other dearly, aren't racist at all, love people and humanity, Mm -hmm. but one's used the wrong semantics or wrong wording, and the other one's bit, and then the other one bites, and then they they go to the other teams then, they separate, they divide, and it's like, guys... What like social media is doing now? What media is doing now? The world, it's all I've just watched that happen on a little scale Literally. of my family, and that yeah, that's that's what's happening online. And mm. I mean, I think yeah, like you say, with Black Lives Matter, it's not we don't want people need to stop vilifying people. Mm. I think because th- this, you know, these institutionalized racism and things like that, it's ingrained. And, you know, I was doing this Harvard, Harvard University did this um, test just mm-hmm. to, you know, test how racist yeah. you are. Yeah. Um, just in terms of like uh, your connotation to a certain photo and, mm. and it measured the reaction time based on when you pressed on the left or the right. Oh, God. And I thought, oh, I'm going to give this a go because I, you know, I would deem myself as not a very racist person. Yeah. But even me, who is so and it woke i suppose yeah with, with the current you know what's going on were you a raging I, racist I, <laughs> I got a slight like slight yeah uh, what's the word like prejudice okay yeah, yeah oh, i was slightly dear. were you quite offended certain, by it as well I was, like, you I thinking, yeah, I've tried my life I tried to be so um <laughs> I try to have my eyes open, you know, mm. listen to people and, you know, see things from other people's perspectives and everything. And I try really hard. So even that really opened my eyes up and just... You, you, I'm not a villain as there's, long as I'm willing to learn. And there's just, like, exactly what you're saying. There's so much scope, so much area for nuance. Like, yeah. there's a grey area in everything. It's not just a black, white, literally, a like, but matter. We have to, like, take footsteps. And what happened, everybody knows, was disgusting. It was, like... It was. Uh, absolutely wrongdoing mm. by a terrible person but it did expose a fl- expose a flaw in s- systematic racism of it did, like yeah. we all know that exists and pati- i know it exists here but particularly america we know all like the statistics the stories the history yeah. and that needed exposing definitely but the measures of which we're moving with it starts to take away from actually the progression in yeah. towards it because I I, th- yeah. I think there's change happening and I think it's inevitable <clears throat> now it's brilliant like the peaceful marches the millions of people around the world together mm. beautiful wonderful and I'm so happy with that yeah. but it's like everyone's gun so like for a metaphor but everyone is pointed at the government now or the the higher power mm-hmm. or like saying change the rules it's wrong and that's where they should be yeah. but it's as soon as the gun starts slipping as soon as someone said something wrong that's like over there yeah, and it's yeah. like no put it back in that place yeah, because that's focus. where change is going to come from yeah yeah if it's in the same direction it's, yeah it's hard um 
And that's what I mean, the media do. Yeah, absolutely. The media absolutely. start, as soon as all the guns start facing the right direction, the media go, no, no, no. And everyone's like back at each other. Like, yeah, and like, then they confuse it. It gets confusing, you know. Mm. Um, it's, it's such a big... You know, I feel like in terms of what's going on in terms of the protests and things, mm. you know, I, I, I hate to see these small businesses, you know, mm. feeling the wrath of it. Mm. Then I also think, hmm change came about look at the suffragette movement that wasn't peaceful you know mm. you know what you, mm. i do think about these and i think can real change occur if there's if it's completely peaceful mm. th th this is what i you know mm. I, I see things from other perspectives and i'm thinking oh yeah that that makes sense oh wait that no that makes sense too and i do i do try to be as open as possible about it and i i love that perspective and again like nelson mandela that yeah. wasn't peaceful in any slight form That's but it. then martin luther king like only advocate like all his mates wanted to fight and go crazy he said no mm -hmm. this is absolutely not that yeah and both worked yeah. both like got changed and both achieved mm -hmm. uh, and by the end like my dad watched this um documentary the other day and explained it to me but martin luther king in the end the the black lives when they achieve where they needed to go now he said like who else is um of oppression mm -hmm. right we need to get the mexicans in bring that and, and then he was starting to introduce right no the whites the poor white people yeah. we need them in oh the poor and whoever was suffering yeah. he was just introducing them all and yeah, that that's cool. ethos that belief is what i want to channel Absolutely. mainly yeah. um I lived in South Africa for a year wow. and this is again very different living very mm. different space but obviously we all know the apartheid and what happened now when I was living there the divide was so strong was it? and it was the other way and I, I, again I was living there about four or five years ago so I, don't quote me on it now I don't know what happens mm -hmm. but when I went to Joburg and Cape Town and the sort of the or slum areas there was literally signs everywhere saying uh, no whites and blacks wow. only okay. and there was a huge problem with employment okay. because they would only employ black people now so they were just spinning it on its head which is fair because you want to sort of balance it out but then they were having power shortages they were having like a massive problem happening lots of um uh, crime, lots of like fighting and races still. Yeah. And when it was flipping that way, Going too far. it just went blop. And for me, that was what I, when I was having conversations, because I love conversations. So yeah. everyone I spoke to was explaining it to me black lives and white lives. Mm -hmm. And they were like, yeah, it just, it's gone too far again. Like yeah. they wanted to balance it out. But now what they've done is turned it damaging because it's still based on it's hate. Still a divide, it's yeah. still based on. Um, uh, what's the word? Uh, it's it's so because I've been so passionate on it yeah. recently because I've been so confused. Yeah, yeah. Um, and this is coming from a white male privileged yeah. person. I mm. do know that. Yeah. But I want to be part of the discussion because we've all got to be. Yeah, of course we are. If we're a part of community, absolutely. If we're a part of change, everybody's got to be on board. I think one thing, particularly because I'm trying to take the approach of just have these discussions, you know, with family members that might have been brought up in a light that you know they didn't realize was actually racist mm. and like i said not vilifying them but i think the connotation sometimes with the black lives matter movement is misconstrued mm. sometimes i've heard a lot of discussions and i've seen a lot of discussions on social media where they think a lot of white people feel that it means that they don't matter yeah and that's yeah that's not what it that we we all know that all lives matter, mm. but at the minute we need to focus sort out this problem. That's, that's that an is. issue. That's an issue. And you know, when I'm if you change your mind, I'm not going to be like, ha ha, told you. It's yeah. no. We all need to learn. We all need yeah. to grow because you know we don't we don't want to be here in a hundred years where this is. Why are we still talking mm. about racism? Mm. It's a pigment in the skin. Do you know what mm. I mean? It's so ridiculous, and I can't even. You know, I'm passionate about this. I'm I'm mm. angry mm. and. I'm a white person and I can never truly understand. Yeah, yeah. And I'm this angry, so how they feel... Hmm, hmm. It is, unfathomable. It's unfathomable, mm. yeah, and, exactly. And never will be, like, for... Our, we can never get that perspective. It's like, it. if you never tasted honey and I try and explain to you the taste of honey, That's... I'm just going to sound like a daft idiot again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like always. <laughs> but, like, no, yeah, but it's, it's just, true. like, sticky, you, gooey, I like... I try to be as, <clears throat> you know, look at things... As empathetic as possible, mm. but... Mm. You know, 
I can't actually truly understand what you must go through. And particularly mm. in the UK, it's, it does exist here. I've mm. seen a lot of mm. that. The UK isn't innocent. You know, you know, and... Um, I do feel as well, it's a lot... It's systems that need changing absolutely. a lot of the time. Because when you're looking at the um, statistics, mm -hmm. like, where a lot of it always gets brought to drugs. Mm -hmm. And, like, more people are arrested for drug crime in this area and this area. And I genuinely advocate, like, the legalisation of drugs. Mm. I don't think there should be... Criminalised. Yeah, yeah, a, a black market in it. I don't think there should be, like, a dangerous, like, underground drug um, mo cartel going on. Yeah. It needs to be, like, like what's happened in Portugal, where they legalised it all, decriminalised, it become legal, and they put all the money that they're getting for government and taxation on drugs mm -hmm. into education, into the health system. And that's in, what we need. And it's so successful. It's been shown to be so successful. And... What drugs like addiction is, is a disease. Mm. It's an illness. Mm -hmm. People don't want to be addicted to drugs. Mm. Like the people, uh, again, this is a great um, science experiment. But <laughs> put my wine down for this one. Right? <laughs> and now, Molly, listen in to Rhythmical for a minute. <laughs> but there was this guy, and it's hilarious because his name's Professor David Nutt. Mm -hmm. But he's the chief uh, health advisor for drugs and does all, like, the social experiments and things. So mm -hmm. they use rats because the ways, like, rats' brains work are very similar to in which of a human. Mm -hmm. And the way serotonin and dopamine's, like, released mm -hmm. is very similar. So he got these rats, and the first experiment, he put them in cages, and they have a shutter. Mm -hmm. And, like, there was certain rats, so they go in, press a button, get cocaine, try it, then they sit, press the button, shut come up, more cocaine. And then after a while, they just gave up. They were like, no, no more pressing the button, I'm done. Yeah. That was, like, 93% of the rats. Okay. Now, there was other rats introduced, and they pressed the button, got the cocaine... And then just kept pressing, ra like scratching, got more cocaine, got and they did it till death. Wow. And they just kept going. And then they measured the way the brain activity was working and the dopamine serotonin. Mm -hmm. And it was the exact way that an addicted person, that the same like uh, frequencies, the same like responses yeah. would happen. So that proved like sort of addiction uh, was a disease yeah. and would act to like death. But then the second experiment, and I won't bore you with my experiments, <laughs> but this no, was really living, fascinating. Yeah, like um, what they did was put certain rats in this cage mm -hmm. with nothing in. Literally right. nothing other than two, like, water. We call them suckers, but <laughs> you know the things, like, the little water, and they've got little suckers coming out. Yeah. <laughs> and one had cocaine laced, yeah. and one was just water. Okay. And 90% of the rats in this cage with nothing going on all got addicted to cocaine okay. water because the the situation the the surroundings yeah. were worth getting addicted to it's now they put escapism isn't it and and they grew they built this cage of rat utopia where mm -hmm. they could have as much sex as they wanted playtime just going out doing their thing like all these rats lived in literally rat heaven <laughs> and only four percent or five percent bothered to go to the cocaine water that so hard. it talked about That's like crazy. situational like em environment what your environment was like yeah. and if we built better environments if we built better places to worth living for we'd have less drug crime anyway yeah yeah that's so right so that that to me isn't a black white matter mm. that's literally a government issue a systematic issue yeah. that needs addressing rather than arresting anybody for drug crime because yeah, it's disease not. yeah absolutely no i'm, really, I'm sorry I'm really, <laughs> no, <laughs> like, just like, smash the glass just like, molly Whoa. let's go <laughs> <laughs> no that, that's crazy that's eye-opening i i just want us to do better do you know like the mm. stupid i hate trump i don't mm. i don't like boris but i think he's a clumsy daft like do not yeah. know what he's on about i mean as as a nurse yeah yeah you know, I, but I, I'm very strongly against Boris. My, my way of seeing countries is just different. Like, I think we're based on a clumsy, like, maybe I'm I'm blind to this because yeah. actually when you look at the 
cogs and mechanisms going behind. Yeah. But like America is overtly based on hate. L- literally, yeah. There's a that's, man that's there who's horrible, racist, and, and he doesn't evil, care about his and will show it off. That's, yeah. And that to me is why we're seeing the problems we're seeing in America. Mm. It's because it can be in your face now. It doesn't yeah. matter. Like you don't need to hide it anymore. You don't need to hide your racism, hide your like nasty side mm. because if he can do it and he's the face of the country we're based on that yeah that's we're, that's true whereas us guys sort of like more the clumsiness and that side of things yeah yeah <laughs> I, suppose, I suppose you are right you know it's not actually aiming to be nasty is it mm. england it's just yeah i just bad leaders i feel they just don't know what they're doing we just we need a shift and mm. the whole way we see things the whole like it there is too many people in essence mm. to govern by one government yeah we need to break it down I think we need to reform the voting system personally mm. yeah it, it doesn't work and no. i mean i think if you look at the difference between the last general election you know it was all oh labor lost like significantly mm. all of this when there was only about two i can't remember now Not many votes, votes in it. In yeah it. yeah and that was all because of the way the voting system worked yeah which, so that means it wasn't actually a landslide and i mean th- there are voices that need to be heard like the green party in Mm. what year was it i voted greens and i was thinking yes Mm. come on let's Mm. make change and then i thought after the election i thought oh my god i've just wasted my vote and it shouldn't Mm. it shouldn't be like that yeah yeah it shouldn't but it it is that like every four years we just have a popularity contest absolutely and i think the media again yeah literally the smear campaign against jeremy corbyn was ridiculous Mm. absolutely ridiculous and it had such power in yeah, deciding yeah. that that whole election and it re- like what are we we're on a tiny little island really small little piece of rock <laughs> with 66 million people on it yeah. you look at new zealand that do it perfectly no she's amazing she per- she's amazing. incredible but also we're on a giant rock mat- like i think it's like 20 times the size of the uk mm. with six million people on it so like it's tangible yeah. that makes sense like to govern that it's achievable and attainable but when you've got 66 million and you're trying to impose this set of rules on these people yeah it becomes too confusing and like back in 500 years ago when we had kings and queens i kind of understood it because when you're ruling over mercia Mm -hmm. or this little bit of land like yeah it makes sense we've got these rules we've got this structure we work out like how these communities are all going to work together Mm -hmm. but then when it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger the only way of making that work successfully is like just localizing it a bit more absolutely absolutely making the rules in your particularly the people that lead this country actually don't know what it's like for the typical working class person Mm. and i think that's a Mm. huge issue yeah but putting a set of rules or brushing over like this is what fits for all these people what fits for the top end chelsea footballers or whoever isn't going to fit the ripley uh townhouses and stuff yeah and i think you've (laughs) just got and the way the communities work absolutely yeah Mm. I think I think we've nailed it. I think we're doing all right. Yeah. Hang on. We're just sorting out the whole world, aren't we, really? <laughs> and they say podcasting is just a bit of fun. <laughs> I'm going to lie awake tonight. And yeah. like, oh, God. <laughs> that Mikey fellow, he's like, why has he not got a tin hat on? <laughs> There's probably tin under there. Oh, God. Let's, you don't believe in the flat world, do you? No, I really don't. But, like, I, again, I'm not a conspiracist. A conspiratorialist? Conspiracist? Conspiracy theorist. Didn't sound right. <laughs> but it, there's things that have come out as true now for definite, like yeah. the Epstein story or there's so many stories that Go come on. out and you're like... And, and what happened was they're all in the conspiracy theory box mm-hmm. and then as soon as one's in there but actually gets found out, it gets plucked out and then what does it become? Mm. Oh, real. So then you've got this box of like... Oh, they're all daft idiots for talking about things, but yeah. it's okay to be curious. Of course it is. The one thing you've got to be is fluent and able to budge. I wrote mm. a little lyric the other day, oh, and I was proud of it, but it said, like, opinions are faulty, mm-hmm. because if you don't budge, you judge. Yeah. And I really believe in that. Like, if you aren't willing to be curious, aren't willing to search mm-hmm. and think, then 
you, you're losing the battle there. But as soon as you like like the flat earthers, mm -hmm. when that can be disproved, and when there's so much information saying other, mm -hmm. because they've built all their identity and self out of that belief, yeah. they won't budge on it. They're just no. like. No. Uh, no, well, have you thought of this? Yeah. I'm like, yeah, we've thought of that and we've discussed it and it's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what people do with politics. Yeah, and again, it's the conflict, isn't it? What the mm. conflict it creates. It's, it's just all we need now is people being open with their hearts and open with their minds and definitely. just allowing mistake. Mistakes are definitely, fine. Let definitely. people be clumsy. Let people... Get rid of this I told you so attitude. Yeah. Is Why just... does everyone want to be right so much? No, it's crazy. I'm not married to these beliefs. Like, no. if you came back at me and said, yeah, but Mikey, have you thought of this, this and this? I'd say and thank you, you think, for yeah, educating. educating and exactly. like, Let helping me, go me and grow. Let me research this now. Yeah. And, you know, it's just all about sparking these conversations. Mm. You know, not not feeling so down or you know argumentative when someone just approaches a top approaches a topic that you don't particularly agree with. I just I think there's so many things now where people can be really flippant, mm. and even on the other side of the fence in the liberal world, they've found slogans that fit them to just match their argument yeah. and stop the conversation. Mm -hmm. You're a cis white male, or like something, and that just stop you. You shouldn't be a part of this conversation. Yeah. Or um, they've, they've built up slogans to say together. So you haven't read this book. or have it, And instead of just showing me the book to go and read, mm -hmm. why don't you, like, talk to me about it and tell me, like, part of it and, like, give me, like, the want and thirst to go into that. Absolutely, Because yeah. the people that they want to change or want to talk to aren't going down their rabbit holes and aren't going to follow their vision but compassionately if you can talk to them on a level they yeah. will they'll open up and they'll be like oh thank you we're all human beings we all sh should want to learn and hmm. i mean it's just the way you approach it if you if you patronize in and yeah it's, no Have one's no one's gonna listen to you if i if i turned around to my nan yeah I was like nan you yeah. racist. Yeah. Come on. Like, she's not going to think. You're stupid. She's going to get a back up and she's yeah. going to defend her arguments. Mm. Why not approach it in a way where it, may, it might provoke a thought in her mind? But know? it's just a lack of intelligence in itself. Some, yeah. It's yeah. just finding, shouting, point scoring, trying to be Insulting. right. Insulting. Insulting. I can't stand. You know, the other day I saw a post and it was, mm. it was po you know, after the, the EDL. Mm hmm Oh, this, this that whole display in London. Um, and I had so many friends on Facebook that were defending it, and I was thinking, mm. and mm. I just, I, I, they, they po there was a one snippet, this one photo taken from it that was a black guy kicking a white guy at this mm. thing. Mm. And it did, that was all, like, they didn't yeah. show the photo of the black yeah. guy carrying that EDL member out. Did you see that? Yeah, that yeah, yeah. And I was thinking, that's what you took from it. And I said, I just commented, I'm sure, were you just as outraged by you know mm. all these Nazi salutes mm. and the out like the booze and the drunk Nazi and like racist chants? Were you just as outraged by that? And all I got was fuck off. Yeah, I'm thinking, <laughs> yeah. I'm, thinking I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm not I'm not yeah. trying to yeah. spark an argument. Uh. I just want to educate you. It's, yeah. Just confused. No, what you're saying is so true, and I'm so confused by the social media platform because mm. it is like newspaper sales have gone down 70% so where they're getting yeah. all yeah but where they're getting all their money now it's and media. it is clickbait yeah, of course and it is. is fine like going through social media yeah. so the media have cleverly just imposed and like brought out like what works so even like going down the semantics of black lives matter all lives yeah. matter they're putting that out in the face and even if it's on your side or on the other side mm -hmm. Putting that out there gets them clicks. Of course it so is. it's just, it's causing up a stir and everyone's like playing the game. That's the problem. If yeah. you play the game, they are masters of it and they'll use you as all their little, um, is it prawns in, yeah, prawns, pra prawns. little prawns. <laughs> <laughs> Don't listen to me. I know nothing about nothing. I'm just working it out as I go along anyway. You know that chess game? <laughs> There's prawns and kings and queens. <laughs> oh my God. I've, I've only ever played checkers. That was the one that I could get on with. It's e yeah. So simple. Easier. It's just that I'm way, crap that at way. Chess, yeah. What's that game the Chinese invented? Is it Go? Have you heard of Go? No. There's like infinite moves you can make on it. Ooh, yeah. I'm, I'm, that sounds cool. Let me not take you there. <laughs> I don't think I'm ready for it. <laughs> but I love a Sudoku myself. Oh, yes. I'm with you on that. I can one. get in with I that. Love a <laughs> so, with the. 
filmmaking territory mm. let's uh, I, I don't need to Just keep get out that word yeah a yeah bit now. right guys you know what to do be <laughs> compassionate you're gonna be all right <laughs> <laughs> we sorted that out um with the filmmaking side mm -hmm. are you really enjoying this avenue yeah. like yeah. is it yeah exciting you it the is. way music does I, I really wish i could hold the camera myself to record myself because oh, i just God. want to yeah. have fun like yeah uh, you've got a little gimbal haven't you i have yeah what, um, do you know what that is? It's, I've got one over there and I love them. Like, yeah, it's just so God, much you can incredible. play with it. Yeah. Incredible. So did your dad have this passion before you told him to get into this passion? His passion is helping me <laughs> achieve my passion. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers, Dad. <laughs> yeah. Dad. <laughs> yeah. No, no. He, he wasn't particularly interested in it, but I think... I've opened his eyes. And yeah. Made him Does he more. love it? Is yeah. he like really enjoying it? So this it? weekend we're actually gonna, because I've got a new single coming out. What's the point anyway? <laughs> Ooh, um, and okay. we just, you know, this weekend we're gonna start filming bits for that. What's the point anyway? That's it. And where can people find it? It'll be on everything. <laughs> Is it? 13th of July. Spotify, iTunes, yeah, the whole yeah. shebang. The whole shebang. Love it. What, what distributor do you use? Ditto. So I was with um, Sony Orchard. Yeah. Um, didn't work out various things with that um, but so I just thought you know let's just go independent again nice okay try and do they help promote extra or do they do so, things so I did actually use like a promo thing this PR campaign okay. that they, they use which was really useful you know mm. got, got in some blogs and yeah yeah it was that's awesome it was, good. It was useful um you know like I said earlier it's just I really want to be self-sufficient there's I, it being an independent artist is really underrated, I think. Mm, and everyone, mm. you know, I want to get signed, blah, blah, blah. But it's so amazing to be in control of your creative... I, I love, love podcasts. And there's a guy called Andy Frazella. Really cool guy, but he had um I don't think it was car no he had a fight um looking after this his mate and he got slashed in the face like twelve times oh my God. so he's like it was this guy living on the streets slashed up face but now he's got like a hundred million in the bank Damn. and he's uh, done loads of businesses set mm. up like entrepreneurial ships and businesses all over the world and he's uh, hello me <laughs> um. Yeah, just a really passionate guy. And he did this podcast a few years ago after he'd got all the success just to talk to young business people and say yeah. there's so much scope. Like, look at any... The reason I like him so much is because he's so honest. But he has people on with him mm. and they were discussing in length why it's so much better for you as an artist to do it, have 100% of the profit. hundred. It all, all comes to you. Yeah. If you're self-sufficient and you built it all on your own back... And, you know, they were saying one of them was a comedian mm. and he had little CDs out and this company wanted to have like 40% profit out of the CDs he'd already made himself, done X, That's Y and Z himself. Crazy. And they weren't even going to like promote them. They were just wanted something stupid percent. But he said it's so much better to sell a thousand of them and get all the profit than 10,000 and share it. Absolutely. And he, there were so many reasons behind that. And it was, I'll send you the podcast because yeah, yeah, it's really do. cool. But yeah. what you were saying then really reflected for that podcast. I was like, yeah, Absolutely. makes yeah. sense as an artist. I, w I want to learn about, you know, best way to promote things, promote my music, you know, be able to do these cool little music video edits. You need to give me that thingy. Final cut. Yes. I'll give it you, but my my friend no, my yeah. friend recently put it on. You, have you got a Mac? Yeah. What what are you on? Catalina. Have you upgra upgraded it? Because I've had it for five years. Well, give it you. Yeah. Uh, they've got the USB stick. Don't kill me. But he put it on recently, and because it upgraded to the certain system. Oh. It's same with Logic. I had Logic. I don't know if I should be saying this, but I had Logic <laughs> on a little stick as well. Yeah. And then as soon as I upgraded mine, it crashed my old Logic, and then uh, I had to buy Logic, which okay. is. But we'll try it. I'll send, I'll give you the stick. Go home with it. Do what you want. <laughs> Stick it on. Probably a bad time to remember. But it should it should work for you. If uh, I'll give you some password stuff. <laughs> uh, where were we? Um, um, yeah. So I just want to be able to create these cool videos. You know, at the minute I'm pretty basic. I, tell me know. the because on my journey of filmmaking, doing my own promotion, mm. or I've made all the mistakes in the world there is to make in anything in filmmaking and that mm. have you made many on your little road yeah <laughs> you were just looking at me that so night I, I got this 
4K camera and I was so excited, this Sony one. <laughs> and I was like, yes. Went straight out to record the fella music video. Mm. Got home and was like, yes. Oh my Is God. it the Sony A7? A7 yeah. II? Yeah, yeah, X. Yeah. X. yeah, they're really good. Yeah, amazing quality. And I was like, yes, I got home to edit and I <laughs> planned to do it all night editing. Mm. And then all the effects and every setting was wrong. So <laughs> what did you do? Do you know what you did in the end? Like what? The foot. Luckily, I had a friend that you know all the you know the oh, the F the frames were out and the mm. ISO was all wrong. And yeah. I had a friend and I was like, please. I sat on Facetime with him. I was like, please yeah. tell me everything. <laughs> How? I, mean, I could have just sat there and learned what these things actually were. But I was just like, tell me the digits. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> How good that ten were you at the time? Oh, I cried. Yeah. Honestly, oh, I was so proud. I yeah. was like, there are so many amazing shots in mm. here. And then, so yeah, but. Not always, not lost. I learned something and I went out the next weekend and recorded you, it. And then now it's out. You've got to go through them mistakes. You've got to feel that pain. Yeah, definitely. Because then you'll never do it again. And it, Yeah, yeah. And it's great to not fall that hurdle because the amount of times I've like, Chrissy, I'm not a filmmaker anymore. <laughs> I'm out of this business <laughs> after four days in. <laughs> <laughs> but it. It, like for me i done um and i don't think this is probably if the lads are listening the concrete rose videos i've done a few of them mm. but one of them we did on this bus oh, and sick. we did a whole day here the only way i saved it um i put it all in slow-mo really okay but i'd shot it in 4k mm-hmm. but on a really high setting as well like a really good 4k version and i put it on there and i didn't realize that's not a strong enough mac to hold okay. the data mm-hmm. so when it came on it was like all dropping frames and they're dead jolty yeah but when i slowed it all down it looked like natural but slow-mo shots mm-hmm. so the whole video looked like that yeah but then i sent it them and they were like why have you done that <laughs> so they came back the next day and i got it in the right setting yeah. but i remember yeah. like looking for about four hours five hours just like in my hand like oh, what have i done i've because ru- it was such a good day yeah. Do you know when you're filming you're like and it's the most gutting feeling mate, ever isn't yeah it? it feels like a waste I'll tell you one with the uh, local healers mm-hmm. we went to in nottingham it's like the contemporary or like mm-hmm. a really nice art exhibition mm. <laughs> And I'd done the best film I've ever done, hundred percent the best film because I looked online. I do you like YouTube tutorials and that. Yeah, yeah. So good. They're so just. They're always like some like cool American fellow. He's like, yo man, life. like you need to get on it. And I'm like, oh, I'm in. <laughs> and this guy was teaching me how to do that. Do you know that shot in? where you can have multiple people in the frame. Mm, yes. So I would watch that and I was like, I've got to do that in a film. And then Ty called me one day and he's like, I need a film. I was like, watch that video. Right, okay, <laughs> I've got a great idea. Yeah. And we went to the art exhibition and Ty had seen this really cool uh, exhibit on. Mm. So he rang up, got all the information, got all the details, got all the authority. We went, filmed it. Wow. And I did it perfectly, and this isn't my mistake now, but I put a little picture online just to, like, advertise it, and it was with, like, nay tie, nay tie, nay tie, look great, awesome, put an yeah. effect on it, gorgeous, Instagram, about an hour later, the the creator, the person that actually designed the art, got in touch, oh. and, uh, and, I, and she was, uh. like, a massive, long email about, like, how disgusted she is that we did it without her permission, and all. I was like... Oh. We've been told by everybody that it's okay and cool to use. So then the the film, which took me hours, hours to edit, and then I put that picture on just Couldn't to promo it. it. No, no, like... Well, even if you promoted her... She work. wouldn't let us in any way. I'd give her so oh. many options. I was like, well, could we just talk about you in a lovely way? Like, And the, um, the song was all about mental health. It was about yeah. depression, really beautiful, like, great vibe. And she was just like, add it. She's like, nope. No, don't. You're not using my art. Not That's with other art. I'm just like, come on. What a shame. <laughs> yeah, and I, I kept saying, I'll credit you. We'll send people to your everything. But do you know, like what we're saying with the politics, when people are just cemented, yeah, they don't see they any other vision. There's no stubborn, stubbornness. No possible other outcome other than don't ever yeah. use my art without my yeah. consent. <laughs> oh, such a shame. Hmm. I think I saw that clip. That shot as well and oh, I was thinking, that looks amazing i was so ready it was good because what you got to do like the tripod shots so you've got to get it on a tripod but then you can be so creative you've got to work out where 
everyone's got to be, mm. but they can't cross each other yeah. in frames. Okay. So first shot, you'll have them sit on the left side, and then we do the song again, and yeah. then they've got to sit a little bit away and a little bit away, and then you use the mask tool and okay. you, you cut them all into sharp. So it's cool. so long-winded, but it works so well. Yeah. And they were performing in the same shot, like Ty and Nay were talking to each other in song. In it, Damn. yeah. <laughs> That's what oh, I, I really love with filmmaking, though. You get an idea, or you go to a certain amazing place, and you're just like, "What could we do with this landscape? What could we do with it's this?" Infinite possibilities. There really it? is. It's yeah. Just so cool to you know channel your creative side and just. Are you are you in that with music like are you uh, and filmmaking? Have you seen like moments where you're like, this is going to be a sick video? Like I can be so like yeah. creative here. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's such a good feeling. I mean, there have been times when I thought that and I've been wrong. Yeah, <laughs> but that's just how we learn, isn't it? But with the fella video, that was cool because mm. I just saw it and I thought, this is it. So I wore like... my mum's dress. Yeah, wedding was dress. that her original wedding yeah. dress? And wow, that was where they got married as mm. well. So yeah, it was cool. Oh, what a beautiful That's sentiment cool. towards it. Were they like when they watched it back? Were they really proud? Were yeah. they like wow? Yeah, they were. They couldn't believe it. They couldn't believe how good it turned out. And that's what I was talking about at the start of the podcast with you, though. You were so performative with it. Where's that come from? If you were a shy little mole back in the day, why are you so like animated and in? I don't know. I think, <laughs> I think it just develops, doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, you've got to watch, you just watch loads of videos of back of yourself and you think, stop being cringy, you know? Yeah. Just express, express who you are and it's just gaining that self-esteem i think freely go go for it yeah you know? so i've spent too many years just not being who i am because i'm too timid about what someone's gonna think of me or and it, it just gets you nowhere mm. just be you know just accept that people might not like you mm. that, that's fine mm. i mean in, in fact they're probably not going to a lot of them when you're being so like yourself yeah most people are the jealousy comes yeah, out in that it does Think, and it's accepting, getting, having peace with that, I think. Uh, somebody said um, to me, and it's a great piece of advice, but he said, if everybody likes you, you're doing something wrong. Yeah. And exactly. you're not being your true self then. No. You're just like trying to be a version that everybody else wants you to be. That's it. Uh, yeah. And again, you really, that's probably the one of the biggest truths you're ever going to come across is not everybody is to please and not everybody is going to be on your wave of course not but when you know the, pe the your vibe attracts your tribe sort of mentality definitely mm. and, and I just think if everyone liked everyone I guess it'd be pretty boring so yeah yeah, yeah. We, we are evolutionary speaking we're part of tribes mm. we're supposed to be in tribes and tribes never got on no. like there was certain rules and regulations and like parts of the tribe then the shaman fella mm. and there was lots of different like thoughts in tribe mm. and that's cool but like the moment everyone's like no be the same be like this condition condition yeah. is when it becomes very toxic Absolutely. back to politics go <laughs> 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 oh, say mikey that's right. and like is this something you would do for other people? Like, would you like to film others? I would or? love to. Yeah? Yeah, Building absolutely. their sort of, like... Because it would create... It would make you a better artist for your own work as well. Yeah. Mm. I, I'd love that. I'd love to do that. I, mean, I need to get a bit better. I need to practice more and mm. things like that. But no... Anyone so, listening? You want me to record you? I'm, I, I'm listening. <laughs> I will record you. I mean, I would love to. I think we should do our song that we've done together, but film it, like as a collaboration i think that'd yeah, be sick yeah that'd be awesome we'll find a play i can't i know what it's all about but i've i had an idea and then i was like nah i think there's something else in this mm -hmm. more metaphorize it yeah. i think mine was quite obvious <laughs> so there should be a girl and a boy and then they should just like go around with each other and be mates <laughs> <laughs> mikey you're so no. out there man how did you come up with that <laughs> no let's 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 i just work yeah. it i love i really enjoyed that creative process with you like mm. knowing you as a friendship level seeing yeah. you perform having admiration towards you but mm. then actually being able to work creatively with you yeah. it's a gr great element to get on with somebody in it absolutely yeah open opens up other dimensions i can't it? wait for you to bollock me for the first time <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i didn't know i didn't know It'll come. It'll yeah, come. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. i got fire you're sacked yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> Sack me from rhythmical mic. <laughs> you, I shun you no more. <laughs> so one area we've not got on, and I really am fascinated in this. Mm. You work for the NHS. You're a hero. You're an actual hero. I mean... Come on. Let's not go that far. I clap for you. <laughs> All of you amazing people. More money. Yeah. Fund, fund. It's, give money, that's man. That's funny, isn't it? It's like, let's clap. Woo. Yeah. And now they're imposing a pay freeze for nurses. Woo. Oh, man. Yeah. All them people that did vote against the NHS, essentially. Yeah. And we're out there with the pots and pans. I was a bit like, it's, yeah. guys, God, look, really? <laughs> I, mean, I think in the end, I just stopped clapping. Cause I was, mm. Mm. It was the first moment. It was, you know, and oh. uh, yeah, oh. it hit me in the feels. Like I had goosebumps. I was like, wow, yeah, this is incredible. But then, oh. when it doesn't spark other, you know, mm-hmm. reform and movement, that's that's when it gets frustrating. Yeah. But, yeah. Well, again, what a lot of things are, unfortunately, is people want to be a part of something. Feel in a trend yeah. most things are just trends mm. so if you join in you feel a part of something mm. and the real a part of something wants to actually ask for change but when people are, have to do something have to actually act out mm. most of the time they're just like no nah, that's i've done my part i've yeah. done my clap, clap. <laughs> yeah <laughs> but i i completely agree with you it's like just um it's just fitting in, isn't it? Mm. It's just like through school, yeah, micro a level true. again. Yeah. As soon as like you had to vote at school, or did you have to vote for like uniform or things at school? Uh, like class, class, uh, you know, president and things like that. Oh. Yeah, no, and you, you do, you do fit, try to fit in with everyone. Yeah. everyone else is voting for. And that's what I felt in the recent like terms. So, with the NHS, like, were you go, were you into that before COVID? When did that come about? Like. What in uh, the end? You work in. So I qualified as lockdown was imposed. Oh my life. Yeah. <laughs> what was Off that time. like? Bizarre. Were you scared? Like I was because so I'm a community nurse. So mm. I'm I'm not I'm not a ward nurse. I've got friends that are and they've done so amazing. Mm. So I can't really. I'm not as amazing as them. I don't want right, to paint yeah. that picture <laughs> yeah. because I'm out in the community. I mean, we do. Mm. We have come across COVID and things like that. Mm. Um, but, you know, I've not been under the strain that they have. Mm. And I've lost my train of thought. What were we talking about? You you going into this job role yeah. as lockdown comes yeah. on. <laughs> so then, yeah, I, I, but of course I was I was scared because I was really nervous about being de- redeployed into the wards. Mm. Because I, mm. I picked oh, community wow. because, you know, I'm, my main passion is music. Mm-hmm. I, I, I chose to do nursing because, you know, if music don't work out... I've got a backup career. I've got. I've do you got love it? Yeah. Ha- do you enjoy? Yeah, I've got being... a passion for for nursing. Yeah, of yeah. course you have to for mm. that kind of job. I mean, there are not many benefits in terms of pay with nursing, so you have to enjoy it if you yeah, do yeah. it. Um, so then, when lockdown happened, I was thinking, oh no, I'm going to be sent to a ward. I'm not going to have any time for music. Mm. Luckily, mm. that didn't happen. But yeah. What's the attitude been like within the community within the the nurses and yeah. like your friendship circles i think it's just frustration yeah i think yeah i mean y- you're hearing this daily press conference and mm. you know they're so out of tune to what it's actually like you know oh yes we have all the ppe in place mm. no i've got friends that are on these covid wards exposed to covid patients and they haven't got a fit tested mask seriously a- appropriate mask yeah, one to, like, of my friends actually got COVID. One. wow so, and it's just yeah it's it's frustrating and it's particularly when they're painting such a different picture on these on these conferences and now look at look at leicestershire mm. it's crazy mm. but that's what happens when there's negligence i feel and you're thinking too much about the economy as opposed to lives so what what do you do on a daily as a community nurse i've never heard the term like so what would you community nursing yeah. is people that are homebound and that can involve you know providing anticipatory medication for those that are dying they mm. want to die at home you know making them comfortable Mate, it can you... be catheterization you know wow. it it is a lot pressure ulcers there's, there's a lot that community nurses do um may you've got a strong stomach like <laughs> I, I, it's just these these parts of my life like where i'm like I couldn't 
do it i just yeah. couldn't like maybe if like shit hit the fan mm. i would have to like man up or like just i don't like that term but like get in I mean, and just be like yeah, here's your cafe to sun that be squeamish but... i mean it, it takes a certain person to do the job i think wow um, i don't get grossed out easy really yeah yeah no have you always had that why why not i, 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 I just love souls like... as when i was younger <laughs> the saw films <laughs> <laughs> oh mate that's real like no but i like i don't mind it in film yeah Maybe on YouTube, do you know when football is like break the legs mm. and it like snaps in two? Mate, I saw a bad like, um, I'm into like, MMA yeah. and I saw a kickboxing one the other day and they kicked at the same time and his leg turned into jelly. Ooh. It literally just went blub. And I was like, oh, it's mad, isn't it? that I can't watch. But could you watch that? Mm. You could have. Oh, mm. I mean, yeah. I dress that. I dress it. <laughs> wow. You, you, yeah, you see some things, but it's always a great feeling when you've healed it. What was yeah. the, the first moment you saw something where you were like, this is it now? So the only You're in. thing, so I've seen <laughs> a lot, you know, throughout all my training, I've seen varicose rain, veins ripped out of legs. Oh, mate, surgery. this is mad. Yeah, I've seen a lot. And the only thing that's ever bothered me yeah. was tooth extraction. <laughs> Tooth extract. What it. were they getting like? Um, you know, pus out or just you know, um, I can't really remember what the procedure was, but it it had to go on a surgical level in hospital because mm. and you know they're drilling the tooth, the tooth. Oh, the sound, the oh. crunching. Absolutely, I've seen a lot. Take care of your was, teeth, kids. <laughs> I mean, I've seen circumcisions the lot, but that was what circumcisions got me. Mm. like. On young people no, or like? the older, elderly. Yeah. Why do they need second? Because it just... become become too tight. It's right. Yeah. Maybe I I am route. no. I'm so happy. I'm talking to a nurse because like, <laughs> do you know when they say in life, you're like, you got to push yourself a bit and like do <laughs> things you don't want to do. <laughs> <laughs> this is my area where I'm like, just like hit me with it. Educate <laughs> me. Yeah. There's a lot. Wow. Like. Uh, was that a, a young decision? Like, when you were younger, did you know nurse or music? Was that sort of, like, coexisting? So my mum's a nurse. Right, OK. So... So, I mean, and they were both musicians. Passed. Like, yeah. she's in a... You've got quite um admiration for your family, haven't yeah, you? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Such a love there. They're my role models. Yeah. I wouldn't be who I was without them, so... I mean, I won't be here without them, Say to be that fair. to the... the my... <laughs> I love <Yeah>. you, <laughs> <laughs> No, yeah. That's um, blessed. They, they make me just want to grow and want mm. to achieve. Yeah. That, yeah, that has such an impact. So that's powerful, like, seeing that and, like, monkey see, monkey do attitude. Mm. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Are they really proud of that now? Do they yeah. look back and go, like, I love what she's about? I bet yeah. at every dinner party, they don't shut up about <laughs> you. I'm like, I don't want to hear any more stories about, <laughs> about Molly. Molly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Bloody Molly, get yeah. up here, Dania. <laughs> oh, they are proud of me, bless them. Yeah. Um, like, one area you were talking about before was you'd quite like to go travelling as well. I would love to, yeah. So how would they be not seeing you for however long, though? I don't know. Because, yeah. So, when I moved out of my parents' home, I actually moved to the house directly behind. <laughs> See you later, Mum. I'm going forever. Literally, like round the corner. Put a, put a fence in the gate <laughs> and everything, and in fencing. No, a gate in the fence. That's what you do, yeah. I think and we could put a fence in the gate. I'd love yeah. that. A fence. Yeah, interesting. A um, in so gate. yeah, <laughs> uh, and a couple of months after moving out, I went over to Mum like, Mum, I'm so homesick. <laughs> and she was like, Molly, you literally come home for dinner every day. How can you be homesick? And I was like, Oh yeah. How, how do you think you'd handle going away then or traveling? Like, I think I don't know. Or, yeah, it's, it's it's one of those territories that I don't. Do you, you know, feel like in I've your psyche then bird, that'd yeah. be? Do you feel you'd need to challenge yourself yeah, in that I way? Think, like, I think so because I am such a home bird. And, yeah. you know, me and my mum really because I told you we're close and yeah. we really rely on each other. So you know, I, I want to go out and explore and I want to have true independence. That's the main reason I I want to explore explore all the different cultures and everything. Yeah, but I yeah. want to you know find me and yeah, yeah. you know be independent, be self sufficient, learn something on my own, do it myself. That's that's my mentality. Getting me excited yeah. now. I'm like I want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna. Do you want to come? <laughs> I'm going back now. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. I think uh, traveling, as as cliche as the saying is, yeah. but it, it broadens the mind. Course, it actually, it does. whatever it is, I've, I've had friends, when I was working in South Africa, mm. I was like one of the reps or okay. like long termers in this, we were working in a monkey sanctuary. So I was looking wow. after capuchins and like uh, proper primates. Yeah. And I was there for like 
seven months, eight months, like long time. But as a long term, you had to uh, introduce people into the camp and short termers. So they came for like three, four weeks mm-hmm. um, would come and we had to take them out on night. So I had to like get them excited and yeah. parties and games and all that. And the ones that really struggled, they'd only been there about two days. Like they literally got there and yeah. then, I'll, I'll be Hits very me. real it was mainly women <laughs> it was like the, the women mm. and I had to sort of like try and um, integrate them into the tribe mm. but they'd always just be like no I want home I want home and one girl got there one night slept stayed over did a little bit of work that night booked a flight went home in the morning Damn. and she just didn't like couldn't feel it couldn't yeah, be away from home like, cut out for it um but that's that's what I want to do. I want to push myself and yeah. see if I can do that. I love that, that about you. I yeah. can really feel that in who you are. It's mm. like you've got this side of music that you've been able to flourish yourself in, but you're not just comfortable in when you've done well there. You're like, I want to push for the next yeah, thing definitely. or something else or filmmaking yeah. or whatever it is. There's, you, there's so much to learn. Why stop there? Do you yeah, know I mean? yeah. So have you got any ideas of where you'd go, how you'd do it, what you'd... <laughs> Asia. Approach it. I like. I like the thought of just. I don't know where. I don't, India. Oh, just. India's a big you, shout. Yeah. yeah. I've never done it's, India. Have you not? No. I've I, a lot. Of, again, when you're traveling, you meet people. That's it. Yeah. And India is one that they always like. Yeah. That was yeah. life changing. Yeah. Life changing experience. I just want to. You know, life here. You get so used to it, and you really do. Don't really know what. Culture, the culture is like elsewhere and mm. I think you're really hindering yourself by not actually learning I about it I really couldn't agree more like when I first started out because I was kicked out of one of my schools oh, yeah. uh, I just really I didn't do well in education I mm. always asked questions played up struggled yeah. and eventually like getting us leave um i went away with my best mate jagger so we were like shit what we're gonna do we first tried the marines like every young boy does yeah we're gonna be army men (laughs) but then i I had this epiphany and his dad's a very wise man he was like no you need you two need to go and see the world do something else and Mm. because i wasn't attached to home like i had not had a loving relationship there so much i like yeah let's go Mm. But we started out with the very stereotypical bat in between us, me and Jagger landing with a big backpack on, going around Australia and yeah. just getting with women and going partying. Yeah. And I really enjoyed it and it was great and it was a different culture, but I was still not really developing too much because I like I've done all that back in the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the moment it was living on my own and finding like how to be self-sufficient, look, cook for yourself. Mm. That was important. But the true learning came from probably like Asia, probably when it was like proper different cultures. Absolutely. Like yeah. you, Non-Westernized. Yeah, yeah. You t- you, you, there's a language barrier. Mm-hmm. Every day you're sort of on edge. You're like the unknown. That's you don't know it. where to go. That was where it was like, oh, okay, this is yeah, who I am yeah. as a person. Like, I've it. really got to find myself here. Because here, I think mm. you're, just, you're just a bit ignorant to what it's like. It's too easy. It's too it comfy. Is. It you is. can just slope, like you said, like go into plateaus all the time. I have no idea... I've never struggled. Yeah, yeah. Never. Yeah. And that that's not that's not good. Mm. No, I, I'll need to. There well, might be things in myself. What that an I've amazing never... mindset! Like, what a very conscious or like very mature attitude, though, yeah. to go uh, to admit or to go. I've not struggled. I've not been through anything yeah. painful enough to push me. Mm. But like, that's where my spiritual side or whatever learning and trying to adapt myself came from mm. was like the moment it was oh shit like every day is what next that's it what do we do how do we eat how do we sleep are these gonna kill us <laughs> <laughs> there was a uh, sorry if your mum's watching this now it's really safe if you let it be i was an idiot that again so i could just bring a couple of times up but what we were talking about earlier and you asked like is it safe is it not mm. It's the only times I've heard like dangerous things happen is when somebody's done what everybody told them not to do. Okay. So South Africa twice, like one moment there was a girl, amazing, like Maria. Um, I don't know if you should say names on podcasts, but <laughs> she's a really lovely girl. And I don't know if she'll be watching this, but like five foot one mm-hmm. at max. Like, but one of them, I think she's from Essex, like hard oh, nut. Maria, I love you. <laughs> and yeah. then... Like, everybody just said, like, listen, 
we're in South Africa. Mm. Don't travel on your own. Don't go out and about on your own. That's all we just ask. I know yeah. the shop's about a mile away, mm-hmm. but in that mile, anything can happen. Yeah. And her attitude was, no, I'm, I can do it. I'm, I'm cool. I'm, yeah. I can, I'm a strong, independent woman. Like, there is more... People want more from women when you're traveling. You know what I mean? There's, yeah. You've yeah. got to be safer. So she went away on her own one day minutes away from never seeing her again so there was a car coming this way yep swerved to the side a guy got out ran started pulling her in trying to pull her into the car and then she like uh, again she explained it well to me but like she was like nearly in the car and then another car like stopped and it was a farmer so a white farmer but he had like all the workers with him yeah and he stopped off they all ran out saw what was happening pummeled this guy grabbed both of them out the the other car sped off yeah they put the the guy that was trying to kidnap her and her in the back of the van sped up to like where we were based so only like a few miles a mile away drove up and nobody was on a site apart from me so i was like on my own and i saw this car i'll put this on in the most scary moment (laughs) that this car sped up i was cooking dinner on my own and i saw like four blokes get out and they had a gun and i was just like here we go (laughs) let's have your lads (laughs) i I would yeah yeah, i would have got absolutely blown over but they all got out and then I, i saw maria and then i like what like what's happening what's happening looked in the back of the car and they battered this guy like that his nose was over it himself and they tied him up in all cable ties and that and the south african these guys were like right um we are going to go and kill him now and i was like what no way. what and they go yes um it, I, did, I got a good I accent <laughs> and they go like yes um here we have to police ourselves there are no police and if we say take him to prison uh he's going to go away he'll get let out and i was like no please don't kill him and then everybody came and saw what was happening and they all come running over and then she was like crying her eyes out obviously yeah. and just panicked and like totally in this mess and then the, we pleaded for them not to let him off mm. And they were like, all right, all right. So we, I had like grabbed him out. This guy who stunk a poo and all that. But like, I had to grab him out. We took him to prison. We took him to the police station. Yeah. Questioned the girls for like hours and then just let him off. They just let, he paid, he paid a, paid a sum of money and then just let him off. And like, everyone was like, oh, that's That's cool now. So it, that there's some like a a dangerous system put in place. There's a policing system that's corrupt. I've seen a Louis Theroux episode. Mm, Yeah. On South Africa. I think they self police themselves. But like, that was again, a, a traveling situation where somebody, just did what everyone said don't do and it was going out on your own doing them sort of yeah. things like the last one the one for me i have you seen like the white tuk-tuks in uh, south africa don't they're like big white uh just like vans but okay. you get like 20 people in and okay. you stack them in mm. and i went with my ex-partner mm-hmm. on a day out in joburg and literally everybody again listen to what the reps say listen to what people say they just say don't go on your own to the middle of Joburg. That's all we ask. Okay. <laughs> and we were like, no, we've been traveling for years together. We, do, we can do what we want. A bit, I don't want with years with her, but both of us have traveled. So we're like, I know what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got on this bus and I've been on the buses all like Pretoria, all these places and they're all safe. Mm. Joburg's different. So we're on this bus and I felt everybody looking at us and they're all like black people and they're like, what are they these rich white people doing on this bus and i was sort of sitting there and then this guy came over and he went you're not safe on this bus you're 100 percent not safe on here you shouldn't be here and i was like with this really like good looking like blonde haired like girl and she just started like panicking a bit oh my God. and then as we're driving and we've got about 30 minutes to go i saw a dead body like on the road no and it hit way. hit rigor mortis stage and I was just sat there like, we're not safe on this bus. <laughs> like, just like, we're not. And the guy who spoke to us said, you've got to come with me. Like, follow me. My life's, your life's kind of in my hands at the minute. So it was getting to this sort of night time now. And it's dropping into like darkness. We get off the bus. And I promise you, 
hundreds of people just swarmed to the bus they all just come round and were like asking for money or like they were just like what's who are these people who are these people what's happening here and the guy just said follow me and we ran down this like road got to a taxi but all these taxi companies wanted to take us so we were like, oh, look, we'll just go with you. And then the guy whose taxi it was started having a fist fight with the other taxi over who got to take oh us. I got in the taxi and then this guy was knocking, saying, money, money, like now. And I was just sat there like, I've not got, and I really didn't have any. And the guy that looked after us, and I thought he was going to take us to like a uh, round the back and do us in. Yeah. Uh, he gave us like 50 rand. So like give us some money and just said, get him out of here, get him out of here. And then me and, like, Becky, like, was just sat there, like, panicked. And then uh, the guy kept, like, who did eventually go, started taking us, like, round some back alleys and avenues. And I was, like, I sat at the front with him. Like, I was in the back, but he was he was here driving. Mm. And I was so ready to just start hitting. And, like, because yeah. re- I thought he was going to reach for a gun. But eventually, like, he let us out. And we, we just got through it, like, the skin of our teeth. But it was one of those moments where... Everybody said, don't do that. And we did. So all my advice is when you're traveling, just go with what the guidelines are. Like, listen to people. (gasps) So many people. Australia, women just think, I've gone traveling on my own. Mm. I can go where I want. And unfortunately, you can't. (laughs) It's just a... Like, regardless of whether you're a strong independent woman as well, <laughs> yeah, I think myself, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. you know, sometimes... Just listen, because yeah. it doesn't matter how you regard yourself, like, life is and life does. So you just yeah, got to be dangers everywhere. That's crazy. I never knew any of that. Mm. That's crazy. It's a, it's, a, it's a beautiful, scary, wonderful, bizarre world, yeah. and it's good to want to go and see it all, and you <laughs> should be able to. Yeah. But when you get to certain areas, like... Eddie Izzard does that running thing. Is it Eddie Izzard? The guy that dresses as a woman. He's a a comedian, really cool guy. But when he was doing this running around the world thing, he gets to certain areas in Africa and they literally had to get him in a car, drive through it and go again. Because they said, no, you can't run through here. He wanted to, but they said, they'll kill you. They'll literally kill you here. So that's people crazy. just know what's going on, but you've got to listen. Yeah. So that's not scared you, though, has it? You want to still... I mean, yeah. a little bit. <laughs> just bloody listen. <laughs> Stay in England. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know there's dangers everywhere. There's dangers in the UK. So, mm, that's know, it. The, the, you just got to, like you say, listen to advice. People and... want to scare you from it as well. Mm. Before I went to Australia, everyone made me watch Wolf Creek. Have you seen that? No. It's a fucking terrifying horror story about people that go missing in Australia. And there's a lot. <laughs> I'm not going to watch that. <laughs> <Don't bother. laughs> watch a documentary. You'll yeah. be right. I'll watch just a little bit. <laughs> Molly, I know you've got a life to live, places to be, things to do. So I'm not going to keep you here forever, but I want to. <laughs> <laughs> Genuinely, uh, where can people find you? What's next for Molly? What's the Molly world saying? Where Where are you next? Um. So... I mean, I have a live stream gig next week, but this is going to be out after that. Yeah, so. there's a backlog. <laughs> there's a backlog. Uh, you know, it's 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 a bit of a unpredictable time at the moment. Mm. You know, gigs are cancelled. I was meant to play Isle of Wight Festival, and that oh, hasn't you happened. Oh, you lucky! But like, uh, Robbie Williams was on this year, wasn't mm. he? So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it, it's a shit time for musicians. But I mean, I'm back in the studio on Sunday and. I've got so much stuff to record, so wow. you know, just keep your eyes out. Molly Ralph. Molly Ralph, baby. Molly Ralph. Oh, you're amazing. <laughs> guys. Thank you for having me. Hey, oh, guys, how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I'm drunk now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for being here. You've been a part of the Old Farm Bus, Back of the Bus Sessions. Molly Ralph's been here, and you know where to find it. I promise, when you go and look online, you find the stuff, you're going to be absolutely blown away it's amazing you you're a special person Aww. you're gonna do well <laughs> i'll see Thank you on the you. other side baby <laughs> thank you for being here thank peace you. out guys Bye. one love